8. Fighter jets buried in Iraqi desert After the US invaded Iraq in 2003 in search of nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons, American forces discovered a number of strange items. These finds included gold toilets and firearms, a Quran scribbled in blood, and Saddam's romance book. While they didn't discover any weapons of mass destruction, they did discover an airplane buried in the sand right next to a perfectly decent airport. American forces dug up dozens of MiG-25 Foxbat fighters and SU Frogford fighter bombers that were buried in the sand. They were missing their wings but were surprisingly in good shape. The big question was, why would Saddam intentionally put planes into the ground? During the Iran-Iraq war, which lasted until the late 1980s, the Iraqi Air Force was able to compete with the better US-purchased aircraft flown by the Islamic Republic of Iran at the time. However, Iranian fighter pilots were extremely skilled, and Iraqi pilots were frequently forced to escape the sky in order to avoid the onslaught of Iranian F-14 Tomcats. However, against other Middle Eastern nations, Saddam Hussein's air strength may potentially make a difference in the conflict, but only against other Middle Eastern countries, not with the US. Iraqi pilots were ready to defend their nation against the US-led invasion, but the Iraqi dictator was not having it. He was well aware of what American technology might do to his plane, especially now that the US was flying the F-22. Saddam wanted his own air force, so he made the decision to keep them all secure. The dictator demanded that his most modern aircraft be stripped and buried near the airbases of Al-Takadum and Al-Assad. In hindsight, this was most likely a wise choice. During the assault, the US Air Force immediately and violently demolished whatever was left unburied. Iraq's air forces nearly vanished while fighting the coalition of the willing. Saddam thought that by burying the planes in the sand, he would be able to save them and utilize their advanced status to frighten his adversaries and neighbors when he was ready, since he imagined he would still be in power after everything was said and done. 7. Coleman Scop Coleman Scop in southern Africa's Namib Desert is one of the creepiest abandoned settlements ever. It's full of abandoned buildings and businesses that were just left as is until the desert sand swept in and took over the formerly man-made terrain. Coleman Scop was founded in 1908 when a Namibian railway worker named Zacharias Lawala discovered diamonds in the area. Consequently, eager prospectors swarmed to the region hoping to get their slice of the pie. By 1912, a working town had been formed, and Coleman Scop accounted for roughly 12% of the world's diamond output, measured in millions of carats each year. The town was prosperous, given its principal and very profitable industry. Coleman Scop's high-maintenance residents were provided with a butcher, baker, post office, ice factory, and other amenities. Coleman Scop grew even more bizarre when citizens wanted an entertainment sector, bringing European opera ensembles to the remote desert for performances. However, the Diamond Town's fame was fleeting. Coleman Scop's natural resources had been exhausted by the 1930s, and the town was totally abandoned by 1956. Coleman Scop isn't exactly the easiest place to visit nowadays, and you need a special permit to get there. The town is part of a forbidden zone, operated by De Beers and the Namibian government. 6. A Crashed and Abandoned Jeep Daniel Robinson, a 24-year-old field geologist, hopped into his Jeep and drove away from his remote job sites in Buckeye, Arizona in 2017. He didn't tell anyone where he was going or why he was going before they followed him further into the Sonoran Desert. Daniel has not been seen or heard since. A rancher spotted Daniel's abandoned Jeep on a farm 4 miles 6.4 kilometers from his employment location nearly a month after he disappeared. The trunk had flipped and crashed into a ravine on its side. The airbags went off, the driver's side glass shattered, and the front windshield broke. The evidence suggests that Daniel was wearing his seatbelt at the time of the collision. The clothes, mobile phone, wallet, and keys of the young man were discovered at the site, but Daniel was nowhere to be found. A comprehensive police search including helicopters, cadaver dogs, and tracking canines was unsuccessful. Foot searches organized by Daniel's father David have also proven futile. Daniel had the habit of informing his loved ones about his vacation intentions. The police did not suspect foul play, but the family accused them of failing to conduct any forensic testing to rule it out. They have resolved to keep looking for Daniel 
until they discover where he is and what happened to him. The search continues. What do you think happened to Daniel? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. Scrolls of the Dead Sea In March 2021, archaeologists digging in the Judean desert discovered dozens of shards of a Dead Sea scroll containing biblical text. According to a government news statement, the fragments are the first portion of the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in about 60 years. They were uncovered inside a cave where Jewish rebels against the Roman Empire hid some 1,900 years ago. Since 2017, archaeologists have been excavating in the Judean desert's caves and cliffs as part of a national campaign aimed at avoiding antiquity looting. Teams also discovered a 6,000-year-old child skeleton, rare coins, and a whole basket said to be the oldest in the world, dating back 10,500 years. The Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered more than 70 years ago in caves at Qumran, are among archaeology's most significant biblical discoveries, holding the earliest manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible and other Jewish texts dating to the time of Jesus. The majority of the scrolls are housed at the Shrine of the Book, which is part of the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. The most recent scroll fragments were discovered in the Judean Desert's Cave of Horror, which is about 26 feet below the clifftop. It is only accessible via abseiling from the top. According to the press release, the location has attracted looters since the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered over 70 years ago. Because of the area's harsh climate, scrolls and old manuscripts have been extraordinarily well preserved. According to the press release, Crews have investigated 49.7 miles, 80 kilometers of desert caverns since October 2017, many of which are totally inaccessible. Eleven lines of text, comprising fragments of Greek translation of Zechariah 8.16-17 have been rebuilt. On another fragment, verses from Nahum 1.5-6 were discovered. Centuries of hot, dry weather mean that the big basket, with a capacity of 90 to 100 liters and made of plant material, can shed new light on how things were stored roughly 1,000 years before the advent of pottery. The Dead Sea Scrolls, largely found in the last century, include the earliest known copies of sections of practically every book of the Hebrew Bible, except the Book of Esther, written on parchment and papyrus. 4. Gafsa Lake The Gafsa Lake is a massive body of water that arose out of nowhere in the southern Tunisian desert. The lake, which is over 65 feet 20 meters deep and covers an area of roughly one hectare, was found by shepherds in 2014 and is located 10 miles 16 kilometers east of Gafsa, along the Om Larayas Road going to Tunis. With temperatures averaging 104 degrees Fahrenheit in this location, Lake Gafsa provides a quick oasis for the people. The locals thought it was the result of a spell or some other supernatural occurrence and they named it Gafsa Beach and turned it into a true resort. The lake is about 2.5 acres in size and about 59 feet 18 meters deep. Local geologists believe that an earthquake shattered the rock above the water table, causing the liquid to rise to the surface. A more simple explanation is that it's just rainwater. When news got out about the discovery, people hurried to the lake to cool down in the scorching heat. Though it has a lovely look and an abundance of rocks that may be utilized for diving, it's filled with green algae, which causes stagnation and can cause infections. Because of the high level of risks that come with swimming in the lake, the head of the Office of Public Security issued a bathing ban on Lake Gafsa. Several warnings were issued about the dangers of swimming there, yet many residents refused to listen. Geologists determined that the lake site has phosphate deposits. They emit carcinogenic radioactive waste, making swimming extremely unsafe and harmful. The lake was discovered nearly 10 years ago, and there's been no additional official news since then. And experts have stressed that if the lake did emerge as a result of a breach in the water table, the fractures from where the water originated might lead the water to flow the opposite way and draw people to the bottom. 3. Petra the beautiful pink city was founded in the year 312 BC, making it over 2,300 years old and one of the oldest cities in the world. Petra, also commonly referred to as the Rose City, has been home to the people since 7,000 BC. The rock-carved city's first inhabitants were the Nabataeans, and it was the capital of the kingdom until the 4th century BC. 
The Nabataeans were Arab nomads who established a local trading center, which brought an abundance of income to them, which created their wealth. Most of their tribes could be found living in the desert areas or right in the desert. Their habit choice was chosen purely out of strategy, as it was easy for them to hide from the enemy. The Nabataean kingdom lost its independence to the Roman Empire in 106 AD. They renamed it Arabia Petraea. In the year 363, an earthquake wreaked havoc on the city just before the Byzantine era, which governed Petra for about 300 years. In 1812, Petra was rediscovered by a man named Johann Ludwig Burckhardt. Burckhardt used an Arab disguise and convinced his guide to bring him to the lost pink city. They discovered stunning cliff-carved constructions, complex sculptures and statues, sophisticated ceramics and jewelry, and much more. Petra is now one of the world's most recognized archaeological sites. Even still, just 5% of the city has been explored and many mysteries remain. However, Petra was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. Jordan's government established legislation prohibiting anyone from residing there, and in 2007, it was listed as one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. 2. The Crucifixion in Rome While excavating in Cambridgeshire, England in 2017, archaeologists discovered the body of a man who had been crucified between the age of 25 to 35. A nail was discovered drawn through one of his heel bones, and his hands would have been tied to a cross during the crucifixion, likely causing him to suffocate to death. He was one of the 48 bodies that were found, who were all removed for a housing development that is today completed, but the only one that was crucified. The skeleton was discovered in its original location in November 2017, and the nail was first overlooked since it was just jutting out a centimeter or two on each side of the heel and was also coated in muck, making it even more difficult to spot. It was only discovered when the skeleton was sent to the lab to be examined and cleaned. The man who led the excavation stated that it was the first time a nail was discovered in a complete skeleton, so it's something they don't generally look for. Romans selected crucifixion for lower-class people, criminals, and condemned slaves. As a result, it's doubtful that the identity of the crucified man will ever be revealed. It's been found that this is the only time tangible evidence of crucifixion has been discovered in Northern Europe and the fourth time around the globe. Two of the four were penetrated with nails. After inspection, it was revealed that the bones were dated between 130 AD and 360 AD, which makes them 1,661 and 1,891 years old. After a DNA test was performed, it was shown that he was not blood-related to any of the bodies he was next to, but it was also confirmed that he was from the native population. The idea that he was a slave was debated because there were signs of thinning shins, which is a result of wearing manacles, but it was deemed inconclusive because there was no way to prove it, and he also could have been a prisoner. 1. Desdemona Shipwreck The merchant ship known as the Desdemona left Comodoro Rivadavia and set sail for Tierra del Fuego in 1985. There were 20 crew members on board, and the ship was carrying 20,000 bags of cement when the engine broke down, preventing the ship from exceeding five knots. A repair attempt was made at Ushaya, but it was unsuccessful. The captain opted to continue his voyage to the city of Rio Grande, despite having little engine power. Tides and severe winds made getting to Rio Grande impossible, so the captain sought refuge by traveling south down the coast. However, after passing Cape San Pablo, he hit bottom. As he attempted to exit, his stern collided with a bank that was not on the nautical chart. It pierced a hole in the ship, and it didn't take long before the ship was flooded. Captain Brillwitz eventually decided to purposefully strand the ship in order to keep it from sinking. The Navy intended to remove it following an inspection, but it remains abandoned in San Pablo Cove to this day. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned desert discoveries was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.